I am the 48th chapter. You have it say amen. amen. It reads, Moab hath been at ease from his youth, and he hath settled on his lees, and hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Neither hath he gone into captivity, therefore his taste remained in him, and his scent is not changed. Turn with me to the book of Psalms, division 129. And it reads, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, verse 2, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. Our thought this morning is the turnaround. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I'm about to experience a turnaround. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. If you would ask anyone, they would readily inform you that they did not choose or authorize anyone for such an idiosyncratic life. If you would talk to anyone, they would tell you the lifestyle, the life that they have lived, uh, has been precarious in of itself because it has been eclectic in some aspects. It has been a cartouche, watch this, of highs and lows all rolled up together. Uh, there have been more strains than successes. For some of us, there have been more pains than progress. For others, there's been more struggle than structure. For some, there even has been more misery than mastery, more controversy than control, more failure than favor, more grief than gratitude. For some, there's even been more devastation over destination. And then if we tell the truth, some of us have experienced, Ray, more manipulation than multiplication. This is why some of you may look at the person next to you, and even though they have experienced such a vicarious life, they don't look like what they've been through. And so it is that I have been thrust I have been interjected into this place called my life and it is my choices, my choices that have defined my present conditions in my life. I am where I am in life because of the decisions that I made. I wish I had some real people in the house. Uh, uh, yes, the devil tried some things, but ultimately it was when I gave him authority, when I authorized him to do some things that I am where I am not only physically but even mentally and spiritually it is those decisions it is the totality of those decisions that have brought me to this place uh, there have been a plethora of things that have uh, come against me but yet it is my response to them that has ultimately defined where I am because I had no control over the afflictions that came to me, but I had a control over how I would respond to them. And so then I am where I am, not because of my neighbor, not because of my mama, my daddy. It is because of the choices that I've made. And so one of the most identifiable aspects of an individual whose life is filled with affliction is something called transposition and not reposition. Watch this. I want you to understand that there has been more transposition in your life and less reposition. 
So you may ask the question, man of God, what is transposition? Uh, transposition, watch this, is the sequence of moves resulting in a position that may also be reached by another or similar sequence. I'm going to say it one more time. It is the summation of sequences of moves, decisions that I've made that have brought me to this position that have also been reached by making those same decisions. In other words, transposition is finding yourself having moved, but only to a familiar place. It is the sequential and subsequent repetition of experiencing the same cyclic, periodic episodes or ordeals in my life. And so even though I got with someone else, I still ended up in the same place. I moved to another city, but I still ended up in the same place. I got rid of one bozo and got what I thought was Boaz, and I still ended up in the same I wish I had some real folk in the place. I, I thought if I changed my attire, I thought if I changed my hair, I thought if I changed my makeup that I would end up in a different place, but because of transposition, I find myself still in a very familiar place. The only thing different was I just was a little bit older. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then we find ourselves having experienced transpositioning so much that we've almost given up hope that there is a better place for me. But you need to understand it is not God's desire for you merely to transposition, but God wants to reposition you. Because reposition is to be put in a new position, a better position, a position of advantage, a profitable or favorable position. It is a position filled with new positive pleasantries. It is relocation but also promotion. It is an advancement, it is an upgrade. And so then, if I'm going to move, I need to make sure the move is not a transposition, but a reposition. Yes. Because some of us are under the notion that if I do certain things, it ought to warrant me to be in a different place. Not realizing it is those same moves that although they have been dressed up differently, I find myself still in the same place. See, one of the things we're under the notion to believe that if my motive is different, that regardless of the method, I'll end in a different place. Not realizing that your motive does not warrant or cause something to be righteous. So we think because we can justify it with a spiritual connotation that then God would bless it. Just because we can throw scripture on top of it, we believe that God would bless it. Because we can find a scripture mache in the Bible that seems to reference the same situation, we believe that God will bless it. Not understanding it's not the motive that has gotten you to the place that you are, but the methodology that you're using. And so then this is why God was so adamant when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt because he understood that if I take them into Canaan with the same mindset, they will still do the same thing, even though they were in a different place. And so if you're ready for God to do a turnaround in your life, the first thing God has to address is your mind. See, we think it's something external that needs to happen first that will produce a different outcome in my life, not realizing you're going to get the same outcome because there's something in you that's going to equate to the same outcome regardless of where I take you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying in this place? This is why we have to understand that transpositioning, it is acknowledging that as soon as you get settled, comfortable, here comes something else. I thought 
I was done with that situation. I, I thought I was over that person. I thought I was beyond this type of temptation. But look like when the dust settled, we find ourselves still back in the same dilemma. I'm still just as hellish now as I was back in 2016. I'm, I'm still just as aggravated as I am now as I was back then. I, I, I'm still sensitive uh, now as I was back then because after the newness wore off, uh, after you got settled in, all of a sudden you find yourself still having the same mindset to the situation. Just after I got over one hurdle, here comes another. After I get over one situation, look like here comes another situation. And it's the same situation, but in a different place with a different person. And so some of us are asking, why me? Why does my life have to be a constant transpositioning? What is it about me that's not about you? That you end up somewhere different. But I seem to keep going in the same cycle. Am I talking to anybody in this place? What, what, what am I doing or not doing that is keeping me in the same place even though time is elapsing? Yes, yes, yes. Then the day I want more repositioning and less transpositioning. I want you to look at the text here in Jeremiah first. He tells us that Moab, watch this, says that Moab had been at ease from his youth. Well, you need to know that Moab were descendants of Lot. Yes, yes. You see that Moab were descendants of Lot. And he says that Moab had been at ease, at peace from his youth, settled on his leaves, have not been emptied from vessel to vessel, neither have they experienced any captivity. And he says because they have been at ease, from the time of their childhood. Because they had not experienced labor, any affliction, he says that their taste mm -hmm. remains the same. But not only their taste, but also their scent. Oh my God. Can we dig just a little bit deeper here? If your taste remains the same, then that means you have to have the same appetite. I'm going to say that one more time. If you have the same taste, it is because you have the same appetite. And if your appetite is the same, that means your desires are, uh, talk back to me, are still the same. And if my desires are the same, that means I'm going to attract the same things, the same people I've always attracted. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then he says, their taste remained the same. They, they only attracted the same thing. Some of us are wondering, why can I not get anything different? It is because your taste is still the same. Oh, I wish I had. Oh my God, I need somebody in here to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That as long as your taste remains the same, then you only go after the same thing. And so except your taste changes, then you cannot go after or pursue something different. Can I, can I help somebody in this place? Yes, yes. See, if my appetite remains the same, then why would God offer me something different? Right. Come on. You're in the house. Come on. Okay, let's, let's come out of the third heavens for a second. If you only like fried chicken, then why would God offer you some ribs? Uh -huh. All right. You don't have an appetite for ribs. And so then although ribs are good for you, because you have the same taste, you won't have an appetite to eat something new. And so consequently, you keep getting chicken in your life. Okay, let me say it like this. You keep getting turkeys in your life. But it's because the taste has not changed. And so he says, Moab has been at ease from his youth because his taste never changed. But if that was
wasn't enough. He goes on to say that he sent thee, which lets me know. Come on, theologian. I want you to understand when you read the word of God that if he uses the word sent, then that means it's not the same as taste. So then what does he mean when he referenced that their taste and scent remain the same? The scent references their image, their behavior. Yes, sir. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes, their mentality. Come on. So he says Moab has been in the same place since their childhood. And the reason why is because their appetite and their mindset has not changed. Some of us are where we are today because our appetite is the same as it was last year. Some of us are confused and we're trying to ascertain why is it that I'm experiencing such dilemmas in my life when the truth of the matter is because your taste and your scent is still the same. And if my taste and scent are still the same, these become the apparatuses, the constructs, watch this, which then commission, watch, y'all don't miss this, which commission the same strains of defeat to come in my life. I need y'all to get this part. See, the reason the same thing is happening in my life because my appetite says bring the same thing. So I cannot attract something different until I first change my appetite. If I change my appetite, my taste, and my scent, then I now commission God to render something different in my life. See, we, we've been bamboozled. We've been beguiled. We've been bewitched. To simply think, if you just think it, if you just wish it, if you just say, I want it, that you're going to have it. When the truth of the matter, your taste, your, your scent, your behavior, your mindset has to ultimately change. Your lifestyle has to change. Yes, yes, yes. Because except it change, then I then authorize God to send something else in my life. Yes, sir. Come on. The reason Ruth got something different than Oprah is because her appetite was different from her. Yes. She said, Naomi, entreat me not. Oh, God, I wish somebody would say that. Entreat me not. I, I, I'm not going to go anywhere. Your people will become my people. Your God will be my God. Yes. Yes, she had a different taste yes. than Oprah. Yes. Yes. And because of it, it then commissioned God to sin. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a bad taste in my mouth. Oh, God, I just wish I had some real folk in the house. And so, and so the Bible says that Moab had been at peace from his youth. And he says that he settled. Y'all highlight that word, settled. He settled on his leaves. Well, you need to understand that leaves are the deposits of dead residual yeast or other particles that settle at the bottom yes, sir. of a wine after it has gone through fermentation and aging. Did you hear that? So he says, Moab has settled, has become complacent. As a result, there have been deposits that have settled that now reside within them. And he says that as wine is left to sell on its own leaves, that means that the wine will retain the same flavor. Come on. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more. When wine is left to sell on its own leaves, then it will remain or keep its flavor and strength. Come on. Y'all going to miss that. He says that Moab has remained the same, has become complacent because his appetites and scents have not changed. And they hadn't changed because they got comfortable with what they've always had in their life. Wow. Talk about it. See, some, 
of us have, that's why I said this morning, some of us are selling ourselves short. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he says, I'm calling for a nation of kings and priests. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, although they had been slaves, God referred to them as kings yes. and priests. Yes. And so then we have to watch ourselves that we don't allow ourselves to get comfortable and complacent because that facilitates the sleepwalking in the sanctuary. Yes. Y'all hear what I'm saying in this place. Huh? I wish I had some help in this place. He huh? says that Moab had, had been at ease because, watch this, let me go a little bit deeper here. Moab was also at ease, Minister Clarence, because it was not on a road that was traveled by everybody. Yeah. And consequently, it did not experience a lot of attacks. I'm going to say it one more time. Because it was not on a road that had been traveled frequently, it did not experience a lot of attacks. Y'all missed it, didn't you? Okay. Some of you are on the same road that many of us have traveled. And because of it, this is why you are experiencing multiple attacks. Moab never experienced multiple attacks because it was never on a road traveled by a lot of people. Yes, sir. And so some of us are wondering, why is my life filled with so many afflictions? It is because of the road that you're traveling. If you weren't going anywhere, that's why you hadn't experienced anything. But those of us who made up our mind that we're going to go to another level in God, then that means I got to get on the road where I'm going to be attacked often. But we want to get on the road and wonder why I'm attacked. Because the road that you're on is leading you somewhere. And so the enemy wants you to end up nowhere. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then he says that and Moab remained the same because there was no empty taking place. The same thing that started out in them remained in them. I'm going to say that one more time. The same attitude, the same disposition, the same mindset, the same pursuits, the same desires, the same ambitions, the same goals that they started with remained in them. Nothing changed. And so consequently, that's why their flavor, their strength remained. Yes, and see, some of us are wondering why we keep falling prey to the same attacks. It is because I have not allowed God to empty the old stuff out of me so that then he can fill me with something better that then makes me stronger. So then I can resist the devil and then he'll flee. But I can never resist the devil as long as I'm complacent, as long as I will succumb to the attacks of the enemy. Come on. Talk about Jesus. So he said, Moab, I've been at ease. He had no issue. You know, sometimes, you know, some of y'all, y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. I'm going to get it to your face. Yeah. You're crazy too. But I'm crazy too. It is because we don't understand that if I'm going to go after the things of God, then I'm going to have to deal with some resistance and opposition. Let's, let's come to your neighborhood. How many of you ever said, Lord, I want to get better? Anybody ever said that? Lord, I want to do better. But then you find yourself still doing the same thing. Lady like Ben testified last Sunday that she came to the altar, went right back out, did the same thing. She was godly sorrow, but she didn't repent. And see, really what repenting is, can we take it just a little bit deeper? Because some of us feel on the elementary notion that repenting is simply going in the opposite direction. But repenting is empty. Is emptying of myself and taking on God. Because if I empty of myself and take on God, then I go in the direction that God wants me to go. And so he said, Moab, I've been at ease. They had no issues. They've been chilling. And he even watched this. Because 
understand that wine goes through a process of fermentation and aging to the point that after it goes through that process, then the good part, the good stuff, is then emptied into another vessel. And so because Moab never went through anything, there was no fermentation. See, see, in part, the reason why God is taking you through some stuff is because he's trying to ferment you. All right, all right. And see, what ferment does, it, it, it makes you better. And see, any wine, if it's going to be better, has to go through aging. Which means it has to go through some seasons, I ask you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And then, then, it's emptied from that vessel into another vessel. Then it's fit for use. But Moab, because it had never been emptied into another vessel, was no good. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Watch this. Let's go a little bit deeper. But then when you go to the book of Psalms, Division 129, here come Israel saying, well, that's not my testimony. Many times have I been afflicted. Yes, oh, 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 oh. Yes, I don't know about you, but many times have I been afflicted. And I'm not talking about just in the past year, Pastor Matt. I'm talking about even since I was a child. Yes, sir. Yes. This is what he said. He says, many times have I gone through transpositioning. Yes, sir. We got out of once. Okay, let me help you. We defeated the Egyptians, then the Edomites came. We got rid of the Edomites, then Brandon the Philistines came. We defeated the Philistines, watch this, then the Amorites came. Lady Benton, we fought the Amorites with everything we had. We thought we were done, then the Amalekites came.
y'all miss it. See, some of you getting frustrated. But God is trying to tell you in advance, Lord, I'm not going to do it all at one time. But I'm going to do it little by little. I'm going to fix this area today. But tomorrow, then I get to that area. Next year, I got another area. But you got to know it's going to happen. Even if it happens little by little. Ready to turn. 